often in exams, uh, a question that comes up is, what is the difference between weather and climate? And this is very simple. Weather means the atmospheric conditions at a certain place and time. For example, in Titchfield it is 20 degrees and has a north westerly wind. However, climate means the average weather of a place based on the data recorded over a 30 year period. So, for example, in the UK we have a maritime temperate climate, but in areas closer to the equator, for example Brazil, they have a mostly tropical climate. Now we're going to revise the water cycle. The water starts here in the sea. The sun then evaporates it and it rises as water vapour. As the water rises, it cools and condenses to form a cloud with many other droplets. This cloud is then blown inland and as it rises further uphill, it falls as rain, snow or sleet, which is called precipitation. When it reaches the ground, it soaks into the soil. The ground will eventually become saturated with water and it will either return to the surface and travel to the sea via surface flow or stay beneath the ground and travel to the sea via through or groundwater flow. When the water ends up in the sea, the process starts again. Another way that water droplets can join the clouds is by evaporation of trees, which is called transpiration. A good way to remember this is every child plays sport through games time. Every evaporation, child condensation, plays precipitation, sport, surface flow, through, through flow, games, groundwater flow, time, transpiration. We hope this clip was beneficial for your revision. Thank you for watching. I'm going to teach you about convectional rainfall. Convectional rainfall occurs in hot climates such as the tropics near the equator. What happens is the sun heats the ground, the ground then heats up and warm air rises. It then CCPs, cools, condenses and precipitates. This creates huge cumulonimbus clouds or huge thunder clouds which create massive thunderstorms. This does not happen in the UK only in the summer because of the hot, hot because of the cold climate. But this does happen in the in hot climates all year round in the tropics. Welcome to my revision clip on frontal rainfall. A common question that occurs in exams is to draw and describe frontal rainfall. Firstly, the hot air rises and the cold air goes down. They meet at the weather front. The air then cools, condenses into the clouds and precipitates as rain. An easy way to remember this is the air cools, condenses and precipitates, CCP. This is the most common type of rainfall in the UK. I hope this helps you with your revision of frontal rainfall. Thank you for listening to my revision clip on frontal rainfall. This is a clip about relief rainfall. So basically the moist air is blown in from the sea and up the mountains, which could be the Southern Alps or in this country, uh, the Pennines or the Lake District, and cools, condenses and precipitates at the dew point of the cloud. This is the windward side where 90% of the rain falls. On the other side of the mountain, there is a rain shadow where 10% of the rain falls. This is also the leeward side. This revision clip is about microclimates. Rural microclimates are greatly affected by the shape of the land. North-facing slopes are often colder and shadier than south-facing slopes that are often warmer and sunnier. Valley floors are also often cold at night due to the, the cold air sinking. This will also sometimes cause frost on the valley floor. There are often strong winds in rural areas because of the lack of shelter. This will make the temperature feel colder. Knowing this will help farmers decide what to put in different fields. For example, crops would be planted in a field with a sunnier, south-facing aspect and animals might be put into a field with a shadier, north-facing aspect. This is a revision clip on urban microclimates. Urban microclimates are found in populated cities and are affected by many different things. Proximity to standing water. The temperature of the water affects the temperature of the surrounding area. Shelter from wind. 
Tall buildings provide shelter from cold winds, making the area warmer. Proximity to buildings. Urban houses and office buildings are heated, and this, on a large scale, can heat up the surrounding area. Pollution. Pollution from cars, trains, lorries and other forms of transport form a layer which stops cold air from going into the area. Colours of surfaces. Darker colours, like buildings in urban areas, absorb heat and make places hotter. Lighter colours reflect heat, making areas cooler. Aspect. Aspect is the position of the sun which makes shadows, which makes shady areas, which are cooler. This revision clip is about the climate of the British Isles. This map on the left shows the average temperature in the winter. It is heavily dependent on the North Atlantic Drift, which is a warm ocean current which flows through the North Atlantic Ocean. What you need to remember is that the southwest is much warmer than the northeast. This map on the right shows the average temperature in the summer. It is heavily dependent on the latitude, how far away a place is from the equator. It is much warmer in the south than it is in the north. Also, larger urban areas, for example London, have a much, are much warmer than its surrounding area due to the colour of the surfaces. This is a revision clip for the average rainfall in the UK. Where it is purple, it is in mountain ranges, in Scotland, the Pennines and in Wales. This is due to relief rainfall. On the eastern side, there is less rain, which is due to this side being in the rain shadow of the mountains.